just like that. They're here somewhere. What are you looking for? Uh, pieces of paper I copied that I brought with me from home.
Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. For those of you who are with us um, in person, I hope you saw that you have an option. We will have communion here at the front, but if you're more comfortable having communion at your seat, feel free to grab one of the communion kits at the back. For those of you who are joining us on Zoom or Facebook Live, we hope you'll have something at home that you can use um, for communion as well. This is Holy Trinity Sunday. <clears throat> How do you celebrate a doctrinal Sunday? Well, you're gonna find out shortly. But I wanna plant this seed in your hearts and minds as we prepare ourselves for worship. Friendship. Friendship is such a powerful connection and relationship. I'll be sharing how we can see the Trinity also in the terms of this, gra this vast friendship between God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sustainer, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. If you haven't had a chance, it's older now, to watch the movie The Shack, I would recommend it to you. You'll see something about that interaction of God in three persons and about the connectivity and the friendship that's there. We are in the summer of the spirit. So all summer long, I'm gonna invite and encourage you to have open hearts and minds to how the spirit is alive and at work in your life. When are you surprised by God's grace and God's power and God's presence? Yesterday, Dan and I went far away to a baby shower just outside of um, Pueblo, and someone said, you must go see the Bishop's Castle. Have any of you ever seen that? I'd never even heard of it. It's outside of Rye, Colorado. Someone said it was vast like the Grand Canyon. That was a big overstatement, but it was amazing. It's amazing what someone does when they're inspired, when they want to use their creativity. So if you're looking for about a two and a half hour away adventure, um, someone suggested I also take a youth group there and I thought, no way, I'm not taking them on those heights, on those narrow stairways. I'll let their parents or loved ones do that. But I was awake and alive to how the spirit works in so many ways. And of course, for many of us, when we're in the vast grandeur of the mountains, we see that as well. As we begin this Summer of the Spirit, you'll notice some changes in our liturgy. We'll be singing an introduction um, to the gospel, the Halle Hallelujah, that should be familiar to many of you. We'll sing through it twice. We'll also be singing a response to the prayers of the people. And so when that time comes, we'll practice that one time through as well. I invite you to now to take that holy moment of a pause of catching your breath, that life force, the presence of God that is within you. And let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand as we begin with our confession and forgiveness, which is printed inside your bulletin. That's all you need um, for this morning is your bulletin. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way instead of putting others before ourselves. We long to take the best seats at the table when met by those in need we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and you are free to love as God loves. Amen. We join in our opening hymn, Come Thou Almighty King.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your peace, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. A reading from Romans, the fifth chapter. Listen for the word of the Lord. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God and not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite our children to come forward for a children's message. And if you'll join me up front. You brought something up here with you, G. I brought Buzz Lightyear. You brought Buzz Lightyear. Aubrey, you probably know Buzz Lightyear, don't you? Oh, and then this, this thing pops up at the top, yeah, right? Right. So I want you to each think of someone who's a friend of yours. So can you think of a friend? Someone who's a friend? And you also who are here gathered, if you're with us virtually, think of a friend. Can you name someone who's your friend? Obviously, one of your friends come to mind? Maddox. Maddox. How about you, G? A friend? No one comes immediately to mind. How about someone who's um, sitting out there? A friend come to mind? You want to name a friend? Paula. Paula. Sydney. Sydney. Okay. So we're going to play a little name back tune, but I'm not humming it because we know that's not always very effective. <laughs> okay. Lisa's got it for us. Let's hear it, Lisa. to us is they share, of course, the happy times, but they share the sad times also. And one of the things, you know, you two are pretty close together in age, and you could be church friends, right? But that's a place you can make friends. Some of you hopefully will be friends here at church, and you can have neighborhood friends and school friends. And for those of us who are older, we sometimes talk about, some of you talk about historic friends. <laughs> You know, friends you've known for a really long time. We make new friends. And God is the best friend we could ever have. Because God can be with us. Because, you know, our school friends, we don't maybe see them if we're not at school. And our historic friends, maybe they're from long ago. But that friend that we have that's expressed in Jesus is someone who's with us. And we talk about the Spirit being with us. So we're going to hear more about friendship. But first we're going to pray. And then we're going to collect some money for some of our friends, okay? Yeah, I've already did that. Yeah, you've done that before. Okay, let's put our hands out and put them together. And if you'll repeat after me as we pray. Dear God, Dear God. thank you for loving us. Thank, thank you for loving us. us. Thank you for giving us friends. Thank, thank you for giving us friends. And thanks for being the best friend ever. Thank you for being the best friend ever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Okay, I'm going to invite you to choose a bucket of your own choosing, whichever one you want, and people will raise their hands if they have some noisy offering, some change for change, okay? So just look and see if anyone's raising their hand, see, and then you can go and collect the change, okay? And what we're doing this month is we are collecting our um, change for change for our camps. So some of the people here have been to camp even a long, long time ago. Because our camps um, are a gift, our local camps, but camp is a great place to learn things, to make some friends. Okay, keep looking, yeah, this is also a paying attention activity. Here's the person. Watch your people paying attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can see on the walls, yep, over that way. And you can see on the walls the money we've shared so far with some of our friends. So we, anyone else? We got it all? Okay, you guys can bring it up here. Yep, up here, yep. We share it, yep. Because the big thing we do in friendship is share. But you can see that we have shared money with Holy Kitchen. You can go with it there. You can go back to your seats. Um, we've shared money that's um, been directed towards Ukraine. We've shared money with Holy Hammers, our local habitat. You can go back to your seat. Local Habitat for Humanity, and we've also shared um, funds, and we actually did a food drive, if you remember, for Aurora Interfaith Food Bank. Um, one of the things we're excited to share with you is we have said that you have preschoolers in your life. We have some wonderful preschool items that we are ready to send out into the world um, to share them with you. So um, they're out in that narthex area. I invite you to now stand as we sing the Holly Hallelujah as our gospel acclamation. Please stand. <laughs> Gospel according to John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, may your spirit work and weave among us that we would take in deeply your great and abiding love for us. And how your spirit is that friend who is with us in every step and every breath of the way. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So I'm just asking for a friend. Do you have a best friend right now? Why don't you just take a moment, like a person on earth, who's your best friend? Sometimes at different stages and times in our lives, it's a little bit harder maybe to take and make those friends. But friends can teach us sometimes things others cannot. 
Maybe we can hear something from a friend that if it was from our spouse or a parent or a relative, then maybe we wouldn't be quite so opening, open to hearing from. This week, as I reflected again on how do we talk about something complicated, this kind of doctrine of the Holy Trinity, sometimes people use metaphors like it's water, it's like steam and ice and water. They're all the same thing, but they have different purposes. But that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, kept going through my mind. Because for me in my faith development journey, friends have been such a key way that I've been able to hear maybe what I could not hear in another way. We hear in this chapter, 16th chapter of John, Jesus says, I'm going to tell, tell you things you're not quite ready to hear. As we grow in this faith journey, ideally part of it is our hearts expand and open so that we can hear things in new ways. Friends become an important factor in our faith journey. This time, I decided to be a little bit better prepared. At the end of the month, I will be going with our um, eight middle schoolers, confirmation kids, and we're headed down to Rainbow Trail. At Rainbow Trail, they do very similar things, but always in new and exciting ways. But a big part of what they allow for is that self-expression, that letting in love and expressing faith in a way that's authentic and real. There's kind of a camp energy that often people think they could have when they come back home. But sometimes it's just a mountaintop experience. But it got me reflecting about how in my own childhood, there were things I could hear and learn at camp. I couldn't learn at confirmation or Sunday school. It's kind of like there's things you learn on the job that you really couldn't learn in school. That flexibility and that learning, I think, Jesus had some sense about to tell his disciples, wait, it's not over. Just because I will have ascended to the Father, don't stop learning. Don't stop growing. Keep trusting that I am with you. And that's one of the best ways we can take those memories, that they fuel us in how to live those things out later on in our lives. So now I want to invite you to consider something you've learned from a friend. Can I just take a moment? Is there something you've learned from a friend? I mean, it can be a practical thing. It can be a big thing. It can be a, a theoretical thing. Okay. Now I want you to think about whatever that was that came up. If that person's still in your life, could you make the effort this week to thank them for that? Could you be curious that maybe that's one of the ways that God's alive and work in our lives is working through our friendships? I think about how sometimes athletes learn things from coaches. They just can't learn other places because they're open to it. They're willing, and ideally in friendships, we're also open and willing to learn new things. I think it was now maybe almost three years ago that I learned to knit from a friend. But I only knit one thing in her small washcloths. I decided that was good. I didn't want to go any further. She tried to show me how to knit, what was it? I think it was a scarf. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm sticking to the, I think, we know it was a hat, it was a hat. And I was like, I'm sticking to the, the washcloths. But it was fun. It gave us something new to talk about. I learned in a different way. It helped me with some of my own, sometimes that nervousness or anxiety. And it produced something that was usable. So what she knew, she was able to share, and now I have those washcloths, and you need a little cotton washcloths on your person, because I just knit them, and knit them, and knit them. Because one of the things that we learn from our friends, too, is about sharing. Because friendship requires a certain generosity, but it also requires a vulnerability, at least in the friendships that become deep friendships. Years ago, I used to do a seminar on spiritual friendship. There's a wonderful book called Ankara, which is it's Gaelic, and it's written by John O'Donoghue. Um, he has since died, but it's about how we can experience things of God in our friendships. 
have friendships that are based not necessarily on common interests, because we do the same thing. You know these seasons of friendships. We'll be friends with people maybe because they live in our neighborhood, but once we move, that's about the extent of the friendship. We were good when we were neighbors. Or maybe we know someone because they're in the same stage of life as us. You know, maybe they're at the same workplace, they have children the same age, but after the interest is gone, the friendship dissipates. But then there are those friendships that are based on common values and intimate experiences, especially the hard things, the people who have been able to show up after the divorce, after the death in the history. I believe that is one of the ways that God's spirit works in our lives. Those people come as emissaries of God, speaking God's love to us, showing up and witnessing our sorrow and our grief. Because what a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs to bear. On this Holy Trinity Sunday, I want you to consider who's been a good friend to you. And if there is a way now that you are being called to be a friend to another, to share this amazing grace and love that God has for us. Because in the deepest and the longest lasting friendships, there is a vulnerability to stay around and stick around for the hard times to enter into the heartache and the heartbreak. I think this is one of the things that Jesus was communicating to his friends. I can't tell it to you now, but you will come to know it and then the Spirit will be there for you. Because they could not imagine the death you would experience, the devastation, the denial they might participate in, the fear that would lock them up in rooms, but then that spirit comes and speaks to them and invites them and encourages them. One of the amazing things that happens at camp is there's the freedom to try out some new things, to maybe meet some people that you wouldn't meet except in that context, and to begin to form maybe some of those friendships based on our common faith experience at a mountaintop. About a month ago, a friend of my younger daughter called me up and said, hey, I'm on my way to Sky Ranch, one of our other camps, because I'm going to be a camp counselor. Can I come stay at your house on my way? And she brought a friend. I love these opportunities. Many of you know my own daughter is on the other side, truly, of the world, so I don't get to see her. But I got to see one of her friends who brought a friend. This opportunity to sit there and have a ramen meal at Katsu Ramen, you know, beloved by my 20-somethings, you know, and share in their values and their stories and what they're curious about. Even though it was a brief moment, it was a gift. Because, you see, friendship can be contagious in a good way. We can share our friends with one another. We can learn some things from one another. It was a wonderful evening. And word on the street is, they'll be back again. I hope so. Because sometimes we get to see and experience a different piece and part of God in our friendship, maybe with unexpected friends. So this week, as we continue in the summer of the Spirit, my hope and prayer for you is that you'll take in deeply what a friend indeed you have in Jesus. And that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, you cannot bring to God. And then to trust that the power of this Holy Spirit works and weaves in our griefs, in our sorrows, in our joys, and in our friendships. So to have that open heart, to receive this love of God. This is the great beauty and the mystery of a God who works in strange and mysterious ways. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day.
this month, um, during the prayers of the people, instead of a, a verbal response, we will sing the Veni Sancti Spiritus Chorus. So we'll sing that through one time now, so you can um, have it be familiar. But one of my hopes for you is that as we sing it over the month of June, maybe it become a tune or a rhythm that um, comes to you in those moments when you need to be reminded that indeed the spirit is with this, within us and with us. Let's try that out. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. One God, giver of life, you established peace through your Son and gave your church the hope of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your Spirit to speak and act in love for the sake of the world. God of grace, we sing together. Veni song di spiritus, Veni song di spiritus. Creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by ecological devastation. God of grace, we sing together. Veni Sancti Spiritus, Veni Sancti Spiritus. Loving Redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth, and care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Further the work of international collaboration and peacemaking. We lift up before you those who are in war-torn parts of the world and those who experience devastating poverty. God of grace, we sing together. Any song is Abiding comforter, you call out to all who live, restore severed relationships, protect children who lack trustworthy caregivers, grant us friendships that deepen our experience of your grace and love. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, or grief. This morning, we lift up before you Kelly Knapp and her family at the death of her father, Jan. Ruth Mattingly, surely recovering from her surgery. Infant Holton, Pastor Andrea Dowden, Carol, Byron, Sue, and Randy Pfluger, Jack Bell, Mandy and the Smith family, Bob Berryman, Andrew Ike, Richard, Jason George, Michael Bax, and those we now name either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We also lift up Marjorie Kielmeyer. For all those who are in need or help or healing, for those who need your power and your presence, God of grace, we sing together. Any song, spiritus, Holy Three, you are community and you create community. Build up ministries that support those who are isolated or lonely. Give endurance as we nurture vital relationships in our congregation and beyond. Make us aware of how we can take good care of ourselves and one another physically, emotionally, and spiritually. 
We lift up the concerns for mental health in our community. God of grace, we sing together. Any song, dispiritus. Any song, dispiritus. Holy God, we remember your saints for their strong faith and witness even unto death. This morning, we especially remember the Emmanuel Nine, whom we commemorate this week. Console all grieving families. Stir up in us the resolve to end the sins of white supremacy and pursue courageous paths of justice. God of grace, we sing together. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping, praying in the most precious name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. And then you may be seated as we collect our morning offering. I've got the baskets in here for you as well. Right? <laughs> so we'll do this in the same way of the children's um, change offering. So if you have an offering and you like it placed in the basket, one of our ushers will come and help you with that. So they'll have to learn their own raising of their hands, looking out for cooler here. But thank you so much for your generosity. It is what makes ministry possible for us. Thank you for those who give to us electronically also. Um, and for those of you who are online and in Zoom, we appreciate your generosity as well. <laughs> what friends do is they share what they have. Thank you. Please stand as we pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The other things friends often do is that they share meals. And so it was on the very night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup he gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus in his life taught his friends when they asked him how to pray this prayer that we now pray together. I invite you if you're comfortable and have someone close by and you to join hands to do so or put your hands over your heart but know that this is a prayer also we pray with those who have gone before us and we pray it in the hope that Paul speaks of for those who will come after us as we pray it here now our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen please be seated 
For those of you who are having communion at your seat, or if you are at home or um, on Facebook Live, hear these words of Jesus to you as you take your bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And as you take your wine or grape juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. For those of you who are here gathered, you're just invited to come forward as you're um, comfortable and ready and stand on the floor around the altar. All of our um, wine is the pink color and our grape juice is the white. And there's a place to dispose of your um, cups and all of our wafers are gluten free. This is the great feast and you are invited. Come taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our announcements are brief. We have our semi-annual meeting. So if you are able to come back or be online at 1215, it'll be a gift so we can have a quorum and elect um, a couple new council members and just hear an update. It'll be brief and um, love your participation. Now receive these words of blessing, of benediction to go forth with you. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
bless you and comfort you and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. All month long, we'll be singing this um, Summer of the Spirit hymn, Spirit of Gentleness. It's printed in your bulletin.